and now that we've uh, we've run our application locally, uh, this is all we're going to do with the first application in terms of development. We're just going to leave it like this. Um, this is what I like to think of as a null app. It, it doesn't do anything, but it proves that we can get a basic application up and running. And, and more importantly, at least for the purposes of, of this lesson, uh, we're going to treat it like a real application, which means we're going to put it under version control with Git, and uh, we're actually going to deploy it to production server. At this point, you should already have installed Git as part of your installation process. Um, in order to get a, a Git repository started, the first thing you need to do is look at what's called the Git ignore file. So here's the git ignore file. So see if you can guess what this is, might do based on its name. Well, it's it's a it's related to git and it's going to ignore something. So wh why might you want to ignore things? Well, let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, let's focus on things like the the temp temp slash and then a bunch of stars log slash star dot log. So this is the Unix wildcard character. This says that we're going to ignore all files in the log directory that that start with anything and then end with dot log. Let's take a look at our directory, say the log directory. The reason we want to ignore these files is twofold. First, these files change a lot. And so what a version control system is good for is tracking the changes in files. Uh, but these change all the time. This development log keeps track of everything that happens when we run the application uh, in a local development environment. Uh, but those changes don't really mean anything. They just record like which links we clicked on and so on. And so that, that it would always be changing, and there's no reason to version it. In fact, it's worse than useless. The second reason not to version this is that if we were to collaborate with other people, our development logs would conflict with their development logs. But they don't really conflict. It just reflects like, which links you clicked on. And so there's a way in Git to ignore all of these log files. Now, if you've used Git before, you might be surprised that there is already a git ignore file in this directory. Uh, in fact, it doesn't usually come with new um, uh, with, with new software projects. In this case, the Rails new first app command actually created a git ignore file for us. And this is uh, just one indication of um, how high the adoption rate of Git is in the Rails community. Uh, now, in this case, even though this is a decent starting dot git ignore file, it's not quite adequate for our needs. So you should go to the Ruby on Rails tutorial website and take a look at the augmented git file, or the augmented dot git ignore file rather, uh, that you'll find there. Now I'm going to paste it in. Uh, you should go to, the, go to the website and get this. And you should use whatever's on the website. It might be slightly different from this. Uh, I've try to keep this up to date, but one of the things that happens when you you do development is that you'll find that there's a file that uh, will it will suddenly pop up when you're uh, you know in your in your application directory and you'll say wait a minute I don't want that file I don't want to at least I don't want to version that file so for example gemfile.lock appeared recently earlier versions of Bundler uh, didn't create this but the newest version of Bundler does so it just appeared in my uh, in my directory and so I said oh I don't want to I don't want to version that. This is a quick update. I'm going to insert occasional updates when things change. It turns out that you do want to uh, version your gemfile.lock, especially when deploying to Heroku. So in this case, you want to get rid of that line. That has been updated on the Ruby on Rails tutorial book website, uh, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that because it's potentially important in the future. So in any case, this is a decent .gitignore file. And now to, uh, to start any sort of git repository, once you've got the git ignore file in place, what you need to do is to type git init to initialize it. And then you want to do git add dot. So dot here is the current directory, and this just says add all the files. Let's take a look at what that did. I'm going to type git status to look at the status of the current, uh, of the current git repository. Look at that. All of these new files have been added. And notice, though, that the log files have not been added. So that's good. Our .git ignore file is working. Now that we've uh, added these files, we can commit them. This wraps them up in, in a nice little bundle. git commit dash m, and this is for a message. We're going to give it a message. Initial commit. And we can take a look at, at what we just did by typing git log. 
And there it is, initial commit. Now at this point, if you've used uh, other version control systems, especially if you've used version control systems like Subversion, uh, you may be wondering what this, what this deal is with a commit. Because in Subversion, when you commit something, it actually uh, pushes up to a remote repository. Um, there's, there's no way to commit a change locally and then push it up later. You, when you commit something, you actually have to uh, expose the changes um, to, to everyone who's, who's using the code. And Git partitions that process into two separate pieces. The first is called the commit, which is what we just did. It made uh, the local changes part of the Git repository and said, okay, we're going to bundle these together as a, as a set of changes. Later on, we will do a separate set, uh, a, st a separate step, which will be to push those changes up to a remote repository. Of course, you're free to get your own server and host your Git repositories yourself, but that's really a pain. And I think these days it's really not necessary because there's this great service called GitHub, github.com. And GitHub will host your repository for free if it's open source. In fact, as you can see here, Ruby on Rails itself is hosted at GitHub, among many others. Of course, I've already got a GitHub account, but if you need one, you can just click on this and you can see their pricing plan free for open source. And everything in this uh, tutorial is released under the MIT license, so that certainly qualifies. So I'm going to log in as the Rails tutorial user. And this will serve as a place for our remote repository for our first app. So I'm going to create a new repository. And it's called the first app. First underscore app. And the description is the Ruby on Rails tutorial first application. And so notice here, I, I'm going to say that anyone can see this repository. Uh, uh, one of the cool things about GitHub is that if your repository is open source, it's free. You c they will host your open source repositories for free, and they only charge if you want a private repository. I think it's a great model, and among other things, it serves as an incentive for making projects open source. And this is a good time to mention that all the source code in the Ruby on Rails tutorial uh, book and screencast series is released under the same license as Rails is least, uh, released under, which is the MIT license. It's very permissive. It essentially says, uh, do whatever you want with this software, just please don't sue me. So one of the cool things about GitHub is that after you create the first repository, it gives you a bunch of, uh, of information about the kind of commands you should run next. So let's take a look at these. Uh, this global setup area says download and install git, which we've already done. And then it says git config, and it says you should configure your, your username on your machine. So let's do that at this point. This only needs to be done once for any system. This is not for one repository, this is just for one system. So git config global user.name, and then I'm going to put my name. Since it's once per system, you can probably guess that I've already done this, but it doesn't do any harm to do it again. So that configures my name, and let's look at the next line. git config global user.email. Now at this point, you should probably just, uh, just copy the whole thing, but I'm going to use a different email address from the one that's associated with this GitHub account. So git config global user.email, and then I'm going to use my primary email address. And the reason for this is that this is associated with my primary GitHub account, which is mhartle. And that's related to the next line, which is this line that says add your public key. Let's take a look at this. If you, uh, if you have a public key, then you, can add it, uh, then you can add it here. If you don't have a public key, then you can take a look at some of the documentation that GitHub has on generating SSH keys. And my public key is associated with my primary GitHub account, mhartle. So let's look at the next steps. OK, we've already made our first application directory. We've, this, this touch readme, git add readme, is just to make sure that there's something to commit. But we've already made our first commit. We need this next line, git remote add origin, and then git at github.com, rails tutorial, slash first app dot git. So let's copy that. 
and add GitHub as a remote origin. So what does that mean? What that means is that we've now configured Git so that when we push up our changes, it will go up to GitHub. And you can see from the next line here, Git push origin master. So we can copy and paste this, but this is a useful command to know, and it, it's easier to, uh, to learn something if you type it out. This is worth typing. Git push origin master. Origin here is is GitHub, because we just configured origin to be GitHub. Master is the master branch, and you'll notice that, uh, that the name of the branch actually appears in my prompt. I'll mention how I did that in just a second. Okay, so this is expected behavior for me, because as I mentioned, my primary key is associated with this account, mhartle. This will probably just work for you, but I need to do uh, something else, and, but this, this is not a nice opportunity to see some of the things that GitHub can do. So it's so the admin area. I'm going to add mhartle as a collaborator on this project. So you can see that GitHub is really built for collaboration. It, it's, it's really awesome. So add myself as a collaborator. And now let's just up arrow to git push origin master again. Great, and there we go. And we can see that GitHub has accepted the new branch, which is master. So git works by forming branches of code, and by default, uh, git comes, or any git repository comes with a master branch. Um, and let, let me show you how I got this prompt. This is covered in the OS X Linux installation screencast, but I just want to mention it briefly here. So this is my .bashrc file, and it, it's got some crazy stuff in it. It's got some uh, some uh, some bash commands for git. This is this gives you uh, tab completion for git. As, and we'll, I'll, I'll be covering this shortly. Uh, but this is, these are the lines that give us this cool prompt. And now you can feel free to configure your system to use this if that works, but you don't have to. In, in any case, it's useful uh, just for these screencasts to be able to see uh, which branch I'm on. Well, now that we've done that push, let's go see if anything happened to GitHub. Click on the first app. And look at that. Here, here is our directory structure. This is great. This is actually the first app. And we can even click into, uh, into the files. We can click into the directories and take a look at one of the files. So th this is just one of the many things that, that GitHub does. It, it gives you a way to visualize what's happening in your application. Um, and one of the other things that it does is, is it automatically displays the readme file, if there is one. If there's a readme file associated with the application, then it automatically displays it. Uh, but there's one thing you might notice here, that this readme is just the default readme that comes with Rails. So, so that's, that's really no good. And our first change to the first app, in fact, the only change we're going to make to the first app, is to fix this problem and actually make the readme say something useful about what this application is. So let's do that. Now, for a change this small, I would probably just work on the master branch ordinarily. But this is a good opportunity to introduce, in a fairly simple context, the idea of branching and merging in Git. So we're going to start by making a branch for uh, modifying the readme. And so the way to do that is to do git checkout. Che git checkout is the general way to switch to a branch. And then we're going to switch to a branch to modify the readme file, but there is no such branch right now. And so we're going to pass a flag dash B to create the new branch and call it modify hyphen readme. Oops. You can feel free to use an underscore there. For some reason, I use hyphens in my, uh, my git branch names. Now, one of the cool things about creating a new branch is that it really is a, a separate uh, area of code, which means that no, really no matter what you do, uh, you, can't, you can't screw things up too much. Uh, one of the things that I found happens to me sometimes is I'll, uh, I will, I'll just mess up an application so much that I realize I need to go back. I just need to get rid of all of the changes I've made. Like, please just throw it all away. And if you make your changes on a branch, that's really easy. So let me show you how that works before we mo actually do the modification of the readme. Suppose I did something stupid like remove the, uh, the app directory. This would be really stupid. Now I can actually uh, restore these changes uh, 
in, in one line, and I'll show you that in a second. Let's, let's see what happened. Get status. Okay, deleted some files. One of the things you can do is git checkout dash dash force. Oops. Force. And I usually use the abbreviation for this, which is just dash, dash f, apparently because I can't type the word force. And now if you do git status, the, the current directory is clean, which means that we've restored ourselves to the previous situation. There's another way to do this that I, I can never remember how to do it, so let me look it up. All right, another thing we can do is rm dash, let's just make a stupid change again. We can do git reset dash dash hard head. Now, I, I'm not sure those do exactly the same thing, but this git checkout status dash f is the one I can remember. This is too ma My brain is too small to hold all of these things in it. But suppose you, you, you d didn't have the foresight to, uh, to make this, this sort of reversal to actually reset things. Suppose you were stupid enough to commit this change. And in fact, suppose you were stupid enough to commit bunches of changes, and you didn't want to have to try to roll back all the way, and it was just such a mess that you really just want to get rid of it. So I'm going to git commit this, git commit dash am. Here I'm committing all the changes with the message. So I made a stupid change. And now suppose that I just want to get rid of this, this whole branch. Well, the way to do that is to get to check out the, the main branch, get checkout, which is master. And I'm going to type MAS tab. That's what the git tab completion gets me. And let's take a look at which branches we have. Let's get branch. You can see we've got a master branch and a modify readme branch. And the master branch has an asterisk indicating that it's the current branch, which we also knew from the prompt. And now I'm going to delete that branch. Now, because I made some changes on that branch that I haven't merged into the master branch, I'm going to do git branch dash capital D. We'll see in a few minutes that there's another way to delete a branch with a lowercase d that does something slightly different. So let's do mo tab for modify readme. And there we go. We've gotten rid of that branch that we, that we screwed up. But of course, we do actually want to make a change to the readme file. So let's uh, let's re replicate what we did before. Git checkout dash b modify hyphen readme. And now I'm actually going to do the modification of this readme. So let's take a look at it. So, so here's the readme, and we just want to get rid of it. And now I'm going to put in some, some content that's actually relevant to this application. So I'm going to put a hash sign here. Ruby on Rails tutorials is the first apps, first application. And what what is this? What is this thing? This is the first application for now I'm going to put in some formatting. Ruby on Rails tutorial. Oops. Learn Rails by example. And I'm going to put this put a URL here. Rails tutorial.org by me. Now at this point you might suspect that this is some sort of formatting language. Uh, this is not a Ruby comment because this is not up here, this, this hash sign, because this is not Ruby. Uh, you might even recognize which uh, formatting language this is. This is Markdown. It's a very nice lightweight formatting language. And this, uh, this uh, pound sign here is actually a top level heading. And the brackets with a parenthetical URL will create a link and these asterisks will create italicized text. Now, this is a markdown file, so we should give it the right extension for a markdown file, and we can do that by moving the readme file with git mv. Now, you can move this with uh, any tool you want. You can do it with a, with a graphical user interface or just by typing mv, but it's better to do git mv because this way git will 
will know that this is the same file. If you just moved it, it would think that one file got deleted and another got created. But here, Git will actually know that it's the same file. So we're going to do git move readme to readme.markdown. Now if we, uh, if we take a look at this, you can see that, in fact, TextMate recognizes that there's, it should uh, highlight some of the syntax here for a markdown file. Right now, we need to commit this change. Git commit dash all with a message, and we improve the me uh, the readme. Great. Now, in order to uh, put this back into the master branch, what we can do is check out the master branch. Git check out master, and now we're going to merge those changes back into the master branch using git merge. This will apply those same changes to the code in the master branch. I mean if you if you look at if you look at the readme file here, this is the old readme file. So let, let's uh, keep it there. Let's do git merge and then the name of the, the the branch we want to merge in, which is modify readme. All right, so we've we've made our change. And now TextMate would ordinarily refresh this, but we actually change the name of the file. So we want to close this down and just take a look. And indeed, it just merged in the change. And we can also do git log and see that we did the initial commit and then we improved the readme. At this point, we're ready to push up to GitHub. Let's take a look at the status of the working directory. Just, oops. Boy, I can really type status, I'm sure. There we go. This is the situation you want to be in on branch master. Nothing to commit working directory clean. And so now we are, we, we've made all our commits. We have all these changes recorded locally. And now we want to make them uh, available um, to anybody who's following this, this project. OK, here we go. Git push. Now remember before we did is the initial push. Git push origin master. But in this case, we actually don't need to say master because it will do that by default. It will also push origin by default. So after we've done git push origin master the first time, subsequent pushes can actually omit origin master. So let's just do git push. All right, so it looks like it worked. Let's, uh, let's go over here and see what happened. So I'm going to refresh the page. It was command R for those of you in the gallery. And here we are, readme.markdown. Look at this. Isn't this great? We've replaced that ugly, useless readme file with a, a really pretty um, sort of semi-useful file. We've got a top-level heading here. We've got our italicized text, a link, and we've got another link here. Uh, notice what else happened. Look, look at this. We've got these messages, initial commit, initial commit, and then improve the readme. So we can see at a glance here that something changed, and we can see that the readme.markdown file changed as part of the improve the readme commit. In fact, you can even look at the commit itself by clicking on it. And so here you can see that GitHub is telling us with these negative signs, or these minus signs, and the red here, uh, that all of this stuff was removed as part of this commit. And this the plus sign here on the green indicates that it's been added. Um, this is what's known in the biz as a diff, if you're not familiar with it. And this is just one of the many things that GitHub gets for you. This, this sort of, it lets you visualize what's happening in your application uh, by making the readme file uh, visible by default. It, it provides a great way to document any project you do. And since it supports formatting languages like Markdown, also Textile, RDoc, and I'm sure um, some others, uh, it, re it really gives you a, a way to, to make a nice uh, set of documentation for your project. And it, it's also got uh, wikis, it's got issue trackers, and all kinds of great stuff. So uh, a lot of projects, especially in the Rails world, just have their home pages, at least de facto, as their GitHub pages. By the way, I mentioned before that we uh, deleted that modify readme branch that we'd screwed up with a capital D. Um, in this case, we, uh, we can take a look at our branches and see that we're, we're on the master branch and we have a modify readme branch, but the modify readme branch has been merged in. And so we can delete it using a slightly different syntax. We can do git branch dash lowercase d 
modify readme. And this is a nice operation because if if the changes haven't been merged in, this command will fail. So this is a safe command, and Git, uh, Git will complain if this will if if you risk losing information by doing this. Um, in this case, you don't need to delete the modify readme branch, but it's nice just to clean things up a little bit. Um, oftentimes, when you have a project with lots of branches, you'll have lots of old branches lying around, and it's nice to be able to get rid of the ones you're no longer going to use. 